Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel. And welcome back to another historical beauty scandal, girls. Did you hear that? How weird. You guys are always telling me how much you enjoy these little historical adventures back to the past. And literally, how did anyone survive up until this point in life? I have no idea how the human race has even survived to this point. Should we just say that? Today, we are going to be talking about the Canary Girls. Now, the Canary Girls are a fascinating little... What is that? Now, the tale of the Canary Girls is not a happy, pleasant one, should we just say. Much like the Radium Girls, it is riddled with corporate lies, deceit, and not knowing any better. And to really understand what happened to the Canary Girls, we have to cast our minds back to World War I, 1914 to 1918. First of all, what were the Canary Girls? Who were they? What were they doing in these factories and called the Canary Girls? So during this time, only men could be a part of the army and only men could go off and fight wars. And because these men were away at war, it meant that they could not produce the ammunitions to be used within this war. Thinking explosive, thinking thinking shells, thinking even paints that were used to camouflage these war vehicles. So since nearly every single one of the working age men in the country of the United Kingdom was off fighting the First World War, that meant that women had to pick up the reins at home. It's very strange how in history, women were often required to do male jobs because there was no men left to do them, yet they still had to deal with persecution and a culture that said that they should not be doing these jobs and that they should not be working and they should not be allowed rights to vote, even though they helped with the war effort. What is happening? What is this? What is happening? Welcome to the Northern News with Cheryl Pickpocket. Hiya, uh, my name's Cheryl and welcome back to the Northern News. Today our paranormal correspondent, whatever, I don't even know how to say that word. She's outside another haunted hospital, okay girls? So we're gonna throw to Adeline now. Don't even like her, she's such a bitch. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Now, as you can see behind me, I am stood outside the Cambridge Military Hospital. Now, this place has been abandoned for years, and yet for over a hundred years, we've had ghost reports happening. Now, we said that the Grey Lady ghost haunts between wards 10 and 14. Now, she was a nurse back in World War One, and one day it's reported when she was giving a drug medication, pain relief type thing, she accidentally gave a soldier an overdose. Now, she felt so guilty god bless her that she jumped out the window and committed suicide and to this day she's still seen wandering around the wards it's speculated that she appeared to help people go to the afterlife whenever there's a dying patient someone very terminally ill she's seen by someone very woman in black vibes darling do you understand she's seen helping them go to the afterlife we've had eyewitnesses say that she appears and then the person in the bed next to them dies so there's a lot a lot of phenomena going on here you got any interesting ghost stories yourself cheryl oh my god right so yes i do actually so once i bought a turkey off the back of a wagon from scally mark on burnley market because it was leading up to christmas and i need something to feed my 16 kids anywhere girly so it was rock hard about 15 stone this turkey so i put it in my council bath tap water just to defrost for three weeks and then after three weeks it was still rock hard so a bit like my ex. Mm, love you prison michael so i dragged it by its little turkey leg and slapped it on my kitchen table didn't even look at it because i was just sick of seeing it anyway i was about to stuff stuffing up its ass just to defrost the bitch and i looked at it with me fucking mum. and on that note guys we are gonna go to carol for the weather it's fucking pissing it down to bring a coat oh i don't even like that carol she's such a bitch Thank you so much for that important news broadcast, Adeline Grundy. Her channel will be linked in the description box below if you want to go over and see some spooky get ready with me. Ooh. So back to your regular scheduled programming, Canary Girls. Britain's women had been recruited to ramp up production of ammunition and were paid on average less than half of what men were paid. These girls were called the Canary Girls. Why were they called the Canary Girls, you might ask? Well... At lunchtime, the women had to be separated in different cafeterias because everything they touched 
turned yellow. They had bright yellow skin and green or ginger hair. And by the end of the First World War, roughly 80% of the weaponry used by the British Army was made by women. Doing their bit actually became a huge part of this whole campaign to get women to produce these ammunitions and go and work in several factories that were producing specific ammunitions and specific firepower based from the chemical TNT. Now TNT is more specifically known as 246-trinitrotoluene and is the chemical compound that you can see on the screen right now. Now this specific compound was used in all sorts of explosions, shells, weaponry and ammunitions. And it is bright yellow in colour. So the women that were used in the factories to produce these TNT weaponry had been housemaids, there had been cooks, there had been nannies beforehand and they were forced to just go straight into the workforce and and produce these highly explosive, highly toxic products for the war. So this group of women that went to work within the factories were called munitionettes. So these women had to perform really heavy duty and also delicate tasks within production of the ammunition. They were handling detonators and literally packing down explosives and they could not hit them too hard lest they actually exploded in their face. Now we get to why this is in fact a beauty scandal. So now we really need to understand why they were called the canary girls. So canaries are these bright yellow birds that you can see on the screen here. They look a little bit like budgies. They're just very little cute little birds that are, as I said, bright yellow. Now TNT is a sulfuric acid based compound that actually is bright yellow in colour. The thing about sulfuric acid is that it is quite a strong acid. Very strong. You do not want to get this anywhere near you. And the thing that acid tends to do when it comes into contact with skin, with clothing, with hair, is depigmentation. It was quite literally ripping the pigment out of their skin and turning them yellow. Their hair turned yellow, their fingers turned yellow, their nails turned yellow, and their faces turned yellow. So for some reason around this like ammunition factory time, a rumor had started that the canary girls with the bluest eyes were somehow the best at creating the TNT ammunition. Isn't that so strange. For things like this, I always wonder where these sorts of rumours started. Like, why did someone first initially say, that girl with blue eyes and bright yellow skin is the one. She is the one who can make these brilliant bombs. Why did they do that? Why did they say that? Why did they even start? Isn't that weird? These women would handle TNT with their bare hands for hours and hours and hours per day. They would be touching their face during work hours. They would be brushing their hair. They would be adjusting their clothing, literally rubbing sulfuric acid-based TNT directly into their skin, into their hair, into their eyes, into their face, into their mouth, and onto their skin. One might not even be able to say that it was self-inflicted because these women were needed. Corporations once again lied about the severity of TNT and how much damage it actually does to the body. Other symptoms of TNT exposure included hair turning green and falling out altogether, chest pain, breast deformation, weakening of the immune system, vomiting, anemia, migraines, and even fertility problems. So this stuff is absolutely no joke. So there were even cases of these women, these canary girls, giving birth to bright yellow children because of just how much exposure they'd had to the TNT molecule. Apparently there was a particular munitions factory in Banbury in which a witness says that in fact most of the children born in that town were just born that way bright yellow. How absolutely insane is that? Apparently the doctors of the time were just like, it will fade, the discoloration will fade with time, your baby will be fine, yes. So naturally at the time, some company wanted to really step in and profit off of this yellow skin condition and actually saying that it can be prevented. Step in the company brand, Oteen. So I have a little advert here that is actually for Oteen face cream. You can see it on the screen right now. Prevention is better than the cure. As every munition worker knows, yet many wait until the dirt and grime of the munition floor or factory have actually settled in the pores of the skin before they begin to use Oteen. This is an interesting concept because no amount of like barrier cream is going to actually prevent you from having sulfuric acid enter your body because you are handling a TNT molecule. It's really interesting that there that someone saw this opportunity to be like, just use this face cream, pop this face cream on and it will stop any yellow from getting into your skin. So Oteen in fact says here, it keeps the complexion immune from dust and dirt. It also makes the hands soft and velvety. Ask any of the countless munition workers who use Oteen. Now Oteen was a really old school brand. It came out with a load of different products that were really quite a staple of the time. There is the vanishing cream called Oteen Snow. They also had Oteen soap, which they said could even be used 
used on babies, it was so gentle. There was even such a thing as Oteen shampoo powders. Now that I feel like is a product that should make a comeback. Imagine being able to reuse your own plastic bottles because someone is retailing shampoo powder that you could just mix up to your own shampoo. Perfect. So Oteen also released a cosmetic face powder in four different shades at the time. So there was Blanche, Naturel, Rachel and Rose. How bizarre is that? Four little face powders. And the thing is, back in the day when you used all of this old makeup, it had no sticking factor. So you had to use something like the Oteen Face Cream or the Oteen Vanishing Cream, which was a really heavy duty moisturizer. The closest thing I can think of in this day and age that it might be like is something like Lotil, which leaves that sort of like moisturizing barrier on the skin and you would just press powder into that. And that would be how you would create your foundation. I actually didn't do something too dissimilar in 2010 when I used to wear Max Face and Body in white and then set it over the top with the Illamasqua powder foundation. And that used to give me the most beautiful full coverage glow. So these poor factory working women were just neglected by the corporations that they were working for. So sadly, in some neglectful cases, there were even explosions in the factories that killed up to 130 people. That was the worst one. And it occurred in 1918, when an explosion at the National Shell Filling Factory, that is quite a tongue twister, in Chilwell killed 130 workers, the biggest loss of life during a single explosion during the First World War and Britain's worst ever disaster involving an explosion to this date. And you know what's even more amazing is that it was a complete tragedy that was kept secret at the time. So on average, two of these women that worked within these ammunition factories died every week. That is an insanely high statistic that nowadays, if you were saying that two people had died working in your factory every week, people would ask so many questions. So it is in fact really difficult to get actual colour images of these girls working in the factories of these canary girls. Girls. We only really have like written testimony. We don't have any like color pictures and that's because color at the time, color photography was still in its infancy. It was not greatly used anywhere. Some of these pictures though are just so well. They're just a lot, aren't they? Look at this one, for example. You can literally see the workers tapping powder into the shells of these bombs. Isn't that insane to think that that was something that actually happened? And look at the size of the shells and the bombs that they were making as well. This is insane. Absolutely insane. Now going back to the Oteen face cream, I want to speculate and share my opinion on this because this could have been something that was uh, particularly problematic, shall we say? Particularly worthy of a historical scandal. So the very idea that this Oteen face cream, well, let's look at the advert first. We can see bombshells stricken across the floor. There are two beautiful women with little heels on who are admiring the Oteen cream. The very fact that it alludes to factories in the background as well shows you that this cream was marketed as a way to stop or somehow prevent these toxins from getting into the body. I do not believe for a second that putting a cream on your face or on your hands actually prevented TNT or sulfuric acid particles from entering the body. The reason why I say this is because something like Oteen face cream would have probably been something really heavy and fatty. The idea that it even says it protects the pores and protects the skin is incredible because fatty products actually block pores and they block the skin. You'll know this if you've ever used an incredibly oily product and had a breakout from it. You will have personal experience. Now something like the Oteen face cream was probably made with something like stearic acid or palmitic acid, something that was really thick and gel-like and didn't ever really fully dry. So in actual fact, probably what really happened is that these girls applied it and ammunition powder and TNT powder and sulfuric acid powder was probably actually sticking to the skin. Hence why potentially everything that they touched turned yellow. Now, if you have ever come across someone who perhaps works for an MLM, you will know that the claims of those products are greatly outstated. I bet you at the time, people that were selling Oteen, maybe that was counters, beauty counters or your local drugstore, would have been like, oh yes, just buy it. It will, it will solve all of your problems. Yes, no more yellow. No, 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 no. Buy it, buy it, buy it. And the idea that it says prevention is better than cure kind of suggests that this was a hero product that they wanted you to keep coming back and buying. Let me know what you guys think about this and what you think of the Canary Girls and their little story. I must admit the idea of your job affecting your body so much that when you get pregnant and you give birth, your child is also the same color of the ammunition powder that you are touching sends shivers down my spine. That is absolutely unacceptable. And interestingly enough, these children came to be known as baby canaries. And do you know what, my lovelies? I think I'm going to leave it there today. I've had enough of hearing about people's hair fall out, their skin go yellow, 
and them just generally rotting because of corporate negligence. Absolutely awful, girls. I want to say a massive thank you to Adeline for suggesting this topic. I think we have done excellently on these two little collaborations, my loves. I am actually doing a little piece in her video as well. If you want to check out her link in the description box below, please do go over, send her some love, and also watch a couple of her videos. They're really good, my lovelies. Today's Instagram shout out goes to a.strantia. Thank you so much for following me over on Instagram, you gorgeous woman on the go. If you want to be in with a chance of being featured in my next video's Instagram shout out, make sure you follow me over on Instagram. Yes. And I want to say a massive thank you to all of my channel members and Patreons. You can see yourselves on the screen right here. You are keeping this channel thriving and surviving, girls. And a massive hello and welcome to Hayley Michelle, Kitty, Mandy McGee, Mary Trish, Obsessed K-Popper, Sarah Engstrom, and Super Sushi, my loves. Thank you so much for subscribing, girls. And once again, a massive shout out and a huge thank you to my top tier Patreons and channel members. Erin Conkle, Magusta Lagoose, Steph Utech, Caitlin Wright, and Morrigan E. Wolf Girl. And the superstar shout out goes to Stephanie Niotupski. Thank you so much for your support, guys. It means so much to me. And with that, my lovelies, I will see you in the next video. 